is like the biggest glass ever. For me. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's you like good. something more dainty? No, <laughs> it's <laughs> good. <laughs>
ethnicity over here? I think here ethnicity over here actually, um, there's definitely, they, they see a lot more, I think there's a lot more opportunities. I think England is changing. Um, so, I mean, look at the role on The Good Wife, you know, I think they saw people from all sorts of backgrounds. So that show seems like a parade. <laughs> Every time, I, I've, I've caught up with the show, season by season by season, I was not an originally a watcher of the show, now I'm, con I'm, now I'm completely hooked on it, but... It seems like you have every non-working act, you know, every actor who has a week off. That's right. <laughs> shows up on That's the right. show we'll every week. I know it's incredible. The cast that they manage to get is just unbelievable. Is that part of the fun? Is it fun to show it's up? It's definitely part of the fun because you just get to meet all the. I mean, I remember when I was told Michael J. Fox was coming, and I had to like really act to put my very serious face on. You know, every actor says, "Oh, we never get excited." Of course, you do. You grew up with these people, mm. um, and I remember seeing him. I was in complete awe of him. So has it gotten a little more relaxed with her since? Has it got a bit more relaxed? No, I'm still in awe of him. Probably more there. when I see what he does. Probably more. But you don't like hang out and go, "Hey, Mike, let's go have uh, burgers." <laughs> You're not having like burgers at the, 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 around the. No, I go, "Hello, pool Michael. How, how are you, Michael?" No, he's actually a really cool guy. <laughs> I can joke with him. He's actually a really, really nice guy. So, where did th this character begin when you first went up for this job? Was there any sense of this journey that you were going to go on over the last four seasons? Um, Five seasons, four seasons. To tell you the truth, I was actually putting myself on tape for a lot of pilots at that time, but via um, the internet. I mean, by, you know, I was emailing mm -hmm. castings over as opposed to going to America. Yeah. And when this one came through, I was like, I'm oh, not another one. I just put my heart and soul into all these other pilots, and there was no feedback. And they actually chased me up and said, Could you please put yourself on tape? And I went, No, all right. And I read the script, and I really liked I loved Calendar when I read it. I went, Oh, this one's quite good. <laughs> So I spent like about eight hours putting myself on tape. Do you had know a why friend. they were so interested in you? No clue. Still? No clue. They even told you they saw you in some moment in, that, in the Indian movie you don't want anybody to see? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that they were just genuine. I think they were just um, trying to find an Indian actress and uh, often, for some reason, I don't quite know, they do go to England when they're looking for British, uh, Indian actresses. Mm -hmm. So I think this was just the next step for them to take. Um, and probably because nobody else was available. So did you had you played any tough guys before? I actually play a woman, you know that, right? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you play everything. You are the world. Um, <laughs> the do I play any tough guys? But she's a tough... She's probably the toughest. The yeah, she's yeah. the toughest, yeah. So was that kind of interesting to you? That I mean, was that a yeah, it felt really normal for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, was that is it um, a challenge? You go, okay, I want to play against type. That I want to try. You know. No. I read that character, and I think the first thing is, is for me, it's the vo you get this little voice, and you just going, yeah, I love it. Mm -hmm. And I just felt that that voice was something that was I could connect to, and it was a voice that had a little bit of me in it. Not the whole physical thing, but just mm -hmm. there was a an art us. She was sarcastic and strong, and, and I, I think there was a little bit, and don't get excited today, just a little bit <laughs> of me in that. And so I felt like I'd be able to, you know, do something with her. So you're saying you're not sarcastic or strong? No. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. So did you, did you have, was it just a pilot script that you were looking at? When you so I read the pilot script, read it, and thought it was a great character, um, sent the the thing, press, I remember pressing send saying, yeah, I, I spent hours on this, I'm never going <laughs> to hear back. And that night I went out for dinner, or the next day I got a call saying we really like it. I, I didn't care about the job, I was like, oh my god, I get a response from America, this is great. And then they wanted to see my showreel, and on my showreel there was something about um, Ridley Scott, I put a quote that mm -hmm. he'd given me once. And um, then they realized I'd worked with him because it was Ridley Scott's company that were right. making it. And so they, I think they contacted him or whatever, and that's when I think they started to get excited. So Ridley made it all work out? Yeah. Ridley made it all. <laughs> it all comes together. It all comes together because of Mr. Scott. So did you... And Charles McDougall, who's the British director. Who's so you were fantastic. driving to come to Hollywood and do something in... I mean, that was part of... I did want to do something here, yeah. What I was it that want, made that interesting for you? I mean, I joked about America being the land of opportunity, but mm -hmm. you know, as a child in England, you always did see that. And any of the big films or anything in the industry, mm -hmm. you know, the place to be is America. So I grew up dreaming of coming here, and it was ultimately that dream that well, I could feel at some point in England, um, I wanted to be there. Just felt mm -hmm. it was the next place I wanted to be. But what was going to take me there, um, I didn't know. So you come to do the show. Yeah. They hire you. And did you have a sense that Kalinda was kind of going to be the phenomenon that she quickly became? 
I had a good feeling about the show. I had a great feeling about that character. And I think the first time I went, oh, we're on, this is, there's something in this, is when they got the reaction from the pilot. Um, one of the producers called me to his office and said, watch this, and this is what the reaction's been. And they said that the character was only meant to be small and just have a little bit and come in occasionally. But I, what do they call it? The pilot knob? Sorry. <laughs> What do they call that the thing? Th when they register yeah, I never they heard like of it before. Like. Yeah. It's basically, it's a little box with a knob, and when right. you see something you like, you turn it one so way. So apparently, I, I apparently that went really high from that. That was whatever you want to call it. There are so many bad jokes that could come out of that. Oh, I know it's all those jokes, because you're telling me them now telepathically. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you're naughty. Um, so, yeah, so... What was I talking about? About the, the character in the yeah, show. Yeah, so that responded, people, people responded. responded to that well, and the friendship responded um, very, uh, they were surprised by the reaction to her and to the friendship. Mm -hmm. And so they actually wrote that in the season, like to start the series off. Right. And obviously I was thrilled. I didn't know anything about America, you know, working in American TV, and everybody was telling me how great this was, and I was like, okay, <laughs> I'll do it. And um, that's how, like, you know, the whole Kalinda Alicia and her character came about. So was, it, was doing it any different than you expected? Um, I think I was like a little child in Disneyland when I did this job. I came here and I was just like, I love this character. And I wrote about a six page article on this character for myself to try and understand where she was coming from, the way I saw her, submitted it to the director. Mm. And um, you know, Charles really kind of gave me a lot of very good direction. Mm. And she just, you know, she just came to life when the boots were on, and that was it. <laughs> is that what it is? The boots for? Are you a boots first actor? Never used to be. I'm a shoes. I, I do the costume, the hair, the makeup. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we were in the, when we were getting that together, I really love working with a team, and I really love what like the costume people would bring to it, and um, hair and makeup, and mm -hmm. just coming up with this idea right. is the thing that I love about my job. Is how do you create that character? Because that brings out different ways that you act and behave. Mm -hmm. So we experimented with all that. They were like, we initially we had my hair down for Kalinda, and I was like, no, something about having it all tied up just felt right. Mm -hmm. And that process is like, it's just, it's just unbelievable when you get a group of people together and you're creating something, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened with the character, and I loved every moment of it. So the process of <coughs> developing her really was more than they didn't just hire you and say, okay, show up on day one. You really. I don't think they had a choice. I just think I was so excited, I was so thrilled, and I had a really strong idea where I wanted to go with her, but. Mm -hmm. Like I said, working with those other people, I mean, I always knew she wanted to wear boots and leather. That just felt right for her. Mm. But working with those other people and hearing them kind of challenge things and push things, mm. you know, from that, I think the magic came from. Mm. It's interesting because the good folks at Netflix, Netflix pointed out that you were in the, uh, the series with Julian Anderson. That's right. And so I spent five hours of my life watching that, which was <laughs> interesting and fascinating. And, um, but it was, because that her character in that show, that show actually literally yeah. dresses during, as a character, she's yeah. dressing to fit the role. It's, yeah. kind of it's similar, I guess. To that was, a, that was, working with that was amazing. Gillian's great. I don't know if you've met her. Really nice actress. I, I missed that whole X-Files period. Yeah. I just went right past really it. Really nice and she actress. She rarely comes back. Yeah. <laughs> She's she's left us for good, I think. Oh, I don't know. You never know. You never you know. Never know. But um, that was that was just a little, really nice job that fitted in the hiatus. That, mm -hmm. and I wore what was so great about it. I didn't, as you saw, like no high heels, <laughs> really loose clothing, um, barely any makeup. It was fantastic because it was such a change from playing Kalinda, where everything is like so specific and tied up. So this summer, are you doing a musical or? A, you know? <laughs> I actually did another really serious um, drama. That's my niche now. You're gonna get a work? Huh? Do you feel like you're being a little tight these days, or? No, I mean no. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like you go on whatever j the journey as it comes to you. I think I get excited if I see a character and I feel okay. I could really get into this, and um, you know, it's that little voice. Something clicks on or off when you read a script and a character. And you just you just follow it. I'm a real believer in that. Just listening. You got ten other people telling you why you should do the job, why you shouldn't do the job, mm -hmm. and they'll all try and influence you in every way. And I think you know, what I do is I go and sit in a room, put a candle on, read it, and just mm -hmm. go, "What's that voice saying?" So, was there in your your novelization of Kalinda's life that <laughs> you wrote, your analysis of it? Did you <coughs> did you influence or have anything any awareness of where you might be going? Because that's kind of become the hallmark of Kalinda over the last couple I had no, like you know what I've learned with this character, I've played her for four years now, is I don't fully understand her, but 
I know when I get her ready and I do my research and then my, my um, uh, preparation then I get out there I just follow my gut it's like another person comes alive and plays mm. it but also what I've learned is like I think the, this is a um, an audience this is a character that I think the audience know her better than me than the kings mm. than CBS this is really like you know the kings are the real sh um, kind of the audience are the real kings of that show because when they love her they will just you know sing out her praises widely when they love the way the character is going the direction of the character mm. when they don't approve of anything they will not hold back they will just like express their opinions and, it, and it's unanimous whether you're talking about the relationship with Alicia and Kalinda even when you know Alicia found out Kalinda had slept with Peter there was a huge agreement of how these two friends should still get back together again mm -hmm. what they thought about the husband you know they did not hold back on that they went out there and I, and I, I realized you know listen to the audience because the audience really for some reason maybe because she's such an instinctive character there's something mm -hmm. about this character that the audiences really do connect to her so how do you connect with the audience I, mean, do you, do you I listen. Twitter, I mean, I don't read Twitter, but I do. I love meeting people. Any, I travel a lot, and every part of the world there is always people that you know that watch the show and hearing what they say and the excitement in them. And I always ask them, why do you like this character? And a lot of the time, I think people feel there is a deep connection between them and the character. Mm -hmm. And I haven't quite put my finger on it what it is, and there's lots of debates about it, but. I don't know, I just think she has a life of her own. If you think about it, she was meant to be a small character. In the pilot, the audience reacted and they mm -hmm. made her bigger. Nobody expected me to win the Emmy. It was a shock to everyone in the industry, to myself, to everybody. But, you know, the audience. <laughs> no. um, and then the response to the husband, nobody expected that. CBS, the creators, everybody had to immediately cut that, you know, edit it down and get rid of the husband. And that was all dictated by the audience. So that was not a happy response? No. So do you, what do you think that was about? Do you think it was just because they 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 want to protect Kalinda, or that? What do I think? What was about the reaction? Yeah. What happened? I mean, it was an intense reaction. Some of the stuff. It was online, very intense. Seen. Look, she was only in two to three scenes per episode of a sixty-page episode. Mm. It's not really that much, but every response to it, in every kind of from the critics and the audience, was like unanimous get rid of him. Mm. We don't want to see this side to her. We don't agree. What are you doing? Or whatever. And I think that's, you know, when you get a reaction like that, you, you can't ignore it. I think for three years, a character was extremely popular. I think they wanted to see a different side to her, maybe even take her out of, you know, what was going on in plot A, just have this sideline storyline. Mm. You know, season four, ironically, I wasn't in the show that much. And they developed this kind of storyline. It was just me and Mark for the first few episodes. Um, and before you know it, it was just like the audience reacted in one way. We want to back, bring in the office, bring back the Kalinda Alicia relationship. And CBS had to, you know. So was it exciting that. going into it? I mean, obviously there was this reaction, but was it the idea was of doing something so intense and extreme? Well, it's nice to push yourself. You yeah. never know how the audience is going to respond. Um, I took those scenes on. I put in exactly the same amount of work and effort that I tend to put in when I play any of her scenes. Mm -hmm. You have to m convince yourself um, that it's going to work or you're going to do your level best to make it work. But the truth is, is you never know what the result is going to be. Mm -hmm. At times I felt I was playing a different character. I think it was a very intense relationship. I think that the scenes were very, I think it was too much, too soon, too explicit, even though I liked the, you know, I like, I, I don't disagree with them wanting to see a different side to her. Right. Um, and I think the audience didn't connect to that character, and I think they used to connecting to her, and I feel mm. that they feel they kind of own her in a way. And they just felt something about this didn't feel right. Mm. And they reacted, and so what I've learned is, you know, the audience know her better than I do. So the flip side is that the, the audience has kind of accepted the bisexuality, the notion of bisexuality. I think the husband story they definitely <laughs> took any attention of that way. But I mean, was that seems like it was a, has been a pretty positive thing, uh, you know, a show that doesn't do a lot of that. It, it's an interesting show because there's so many gay characters cast as straight characters, gay actors who are famously gay, who are playing very straight roles, and then there's this, like, Kalinda really is the only one whose sexuality is an issue. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. People who kind of had opinions about bisexuality or have I feel have kind of changed I mean I do feel the character like you said earlier it's just come across as being a normal strong intelligent woman mm -hmm. her sexuality her, her cultural background 
her attitude towards relationships really doesn't matter because this mm. is just a normal, intelligent, strong woman and people accept her for that. And you know, I, I commend Robert Michelle King and, and CBS for taking such a risk with such a provocative character with very often provocative stories. So do you get a reaction, a different reaction at, back in India? Is that, I mean, because it's a, uh, still a more controversial issue, I guess. Um, not yeah. really. I mean, not, I've never had, I, I normally get, <laughs> from people in general, I normally get the issue, I, I know, not the issue, I normally get the reaction of, um, she's naughty, isn't she? <laughs> She's a naughty girl, she's a bad, like all my aunties in England would say to my mum, and I was nervous about what that reaction would be, is like, mm. this is what's worrying, they say, this is the perfect character for her. <laughs> <laughs> well. And my mum's like, this is a really good character for you, this is so, mm. I don't know what that, you make of that what you want, but there doesn't seem to be any disapproval of it, There's, there is an acceptance for whatever she is. Which is significant, I mean, I, look, yeah, I, I, do. I made a point, because I kind of remembered there was an issue, and looked up online, the state of, you know, the perception of lesbianism in, yeah. in India, and it's still pretty harsh, no, you know, um, in some circles. I think in every country there is an element, you know, in some parts there may be an, an element of that, but I certainly haven't faced it, um, like I said, I travel a lot, to, mm -hmm. um, and I haven't actually ever, you know, faced any of that myself. Mm -hmm. And playing a character who is bisexual, I would have expected to on some level, but mm -hmm. I think she manages to, um, you know, she manages to become accepted to those that may not, you know, have, may have strong opinions on it. And the girls she chooses are really hot. They are pretty hot. Aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> it, it helps, I guess. Did your mom have an issue, uh, an issue with your marriage on the show? Did she? Uh no, I mean, well, I don't know whether she's actually, that season is just being... Watch her? Do you send her tapes? Yeah, no, she watches it in England. It's on right now in England. It's on, so, it's um, on same, same, yeah, every same time season. she watches it, she'll just look at me and just like give a very coy smile as if to say, <laughs> naughty. <laughs> so now that you've been in paradise for four seasons, is it as fun as it was when you started? Or are you, are you looking for it's new like ways to uh, yourself? Or? Um, it's like anything, isn't it? As time goes on, you understand it better. It becomes a little bit easier. Mm. Um, I think it's really hard to play a character. 22 episodes for four years, still trying to keep that character fresh and interesting without knowing where the journey is going to go. Mm. So I don't know what they're, um, you know, what they've got planned. They're not hinting to you? Or? No, I mean, we don't really know. I mean, they talk, but I, I, I guess it, they're juggling so many balls. There's so many characters to deal with. So, and I think after the husband storyline, you know, they kind of want to experiment with things and see what the reaction is like. Because for some reason, the character and the response to the character is always, it sparks off conversations. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure they're taking care with which way they want to take that character. So it certainly seems like they've set up a big change for next season. I don't next know. Season. I don't know. <laughs> it's a mystery rather than an enigma. It is a mystery. So how long do you have before you start shooting again? Um, I don't know. I think they start again in July. So it's coming up quickly. So you've already had time to go out and shoot another movie. Yeah, I did a drama which was really nice in Ireland. And now you're just hanging out? Um, I have a little bit of a break. And I do a lot of voiceover work, so I'm really enjoying that. I play kids um, on a TV series called Postman Pat. Huh. And I'm doing a couple. I just, I mean, it's a re it's really fun to do that because obviously you have to act without, you know, the help of the hair and the makeup or whatever. So mm -hmm. it's a good way to sharpen your tools. So wh what's your kid's voice? <laughs> so I play a kid and a mum, and okay. the kid talks like this. Goes, Hello, mum. How are you today? And the mother talks like this. I'm very well. How are you, darling? <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's absolutely <laughs> it's such great fun to play. It's really nice. Um, have you done have you done a lot of voiceover work before that? Or I do a bit. So is that a whole different muscle group, or does it feel the same? Or um, I think it's just different characters. I think I just go into different characters. I turn like when I do that character, I put my hair in a ponytail mm -hmm. and wear a t-shirt and act like ten again. <laughs> and then obviously when I play the mother, I just think of my mom. See, I think the ten probably is not that hard for you. It's not. <laughs> You seem like a, just seem like a, a genuinely happy, easy person. Is that a fair assessment, or is that no? You just seem to be very, you know, you're kind of like going with the flow. And you have to, isn't it? This business is such a, it's the strangest business to be in, and I love it. But um, you can't really take it. You could. I love to take the work seriously, but everything else is just. You really have to just enjoy it while you can. Well, people have the, get the attitude of their, you know, their fear of losing something becomes greater than. Uh, the enjoyment of having Well, somebody it. once somebody once gave me a book of quotes, and most of the quotes were okay. But one quote stayed in my mind, which was that no actor ever makes it. And I think it's a really clever quote because, you know, you have you. Know, everybody has their moment, and everybody kind of 
has a moment and then goes and then you so I just I'm from the philosophies enjoy it while you can do the work you love and and that's it really <laughs> <laughs> and you still have that little girl going on inside of you who wanted to, just wants to play? Yeah, just play different characters. You think that doesn't get ever get run over by business or any of that stuff? Um, well, playing different characters. No, the idea of just finding that kid inside who just wants to be an actor when you were two years old. And oh, it's always there. It's always there. Every time I come to LA, I'm like, oh my god, I'm in LA. And then you meet everybody, you're like, hello, yes, my name is Archie. And, yeah. I mean, every time you do something, I'm like, I'm just going to live this moment. I've, I've dreamed about this, but obviously I have to control it because other people think I'm a bit nutty. I'm, I'm so grateful for the opportunities that I've had. And to do a series like this and to play such a great character that the audience love is just, I mean, it's priceless, David. It's just priceless. And I mean, sometimes in life you have these opportunities and you don't celebrate them and go, this is fucking great. And I'm going to, you know, just enjoy what I can while I have it because, you know, we all get old and we go. Sad but true, right? Indeed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> I did it for two years and. I got selected for this like touring group mm -hmm. and I didn't have pink shoes, ballerina shoes, I had black ones and I said to my mm -hmm. mom I don't want to do it unless I pink and she said you know when I can afford it I'll get you that. Mm -hmm. I hate, I, I regret doing that now but mm -hmm. I just cried and I went no I'm not doing it anymore and I stopped. <laughs> she, she kind of dragged me to go and I just went no I'm not doing it anymore. So what was your first, was East is East was your first film Yeah. but it wasn't your first professional experience? No. Right? So what was your first, wh how old were you when you started actually making money doing it? Younger. <laughs> <laughs> um, I probably was about uh, 16. And uh, TV or? Yeah, I'm not going to tell you what it is because <laughs> nobody's seen it. <laughs> nobody's seen it and I, was really, it and I was really crap in it. Well, you're not on my nose, so it's safe. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, people go out and find it somewhere. Right? Um, I did something, I did this like television job for Germany. Mm -hmm. And then I did something called the Thimbleton Line for England. I did a lot of like comedy actually, which is weird. Because you don't see yourself as funny? Um, no, I just, my career's kind of gone on to such serious roles now, so mm -hmm. it feels weird when I think about it. Do you miss it? Do you miss I do comedy? miss it. I do miss it. I love doing comedy. I think it's, you know, it's, it has its own challenge, but I do miss it. Seems like it would be the next turn to take for you. Yeah, I would love to. I'd love to. I always have this burning desire to play like a character from Bombay. I did it in a radio play once where she was, you know, all over the place and had a real attitude problem and just always wore sunglasses and chewed gum and I just, you know. <laughs> so you, do you go back to India? I do, yeah. Uh, when I can, I love it there. Just I grew on. up there, so. Yeah, I feel like England, America, India, each one of those are my homes. I can't sit still now. I can't stay in one place. Hmm. So you have no preference for any one of them? You just kind of float? No, I'm a country slut. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I, I think as a child I was so excited, yeah, she's yeah. the toughest, yeah. So was that kind of interesting to you? That I mean, was that a kind of <laughs> It felt really normal scripts? for me. <laughs> well, I mean, was that, is it um, a challenge? You go, okay, I want to play against type, that I want to try, you know? No. I read that character and I think the first thing is, is for me, it's the vo you get this little voice and you just go, yeah, I love it. Mm -hmm. And I just felt that that voice was something that was I could connect to and it was a voice that had a little bit of me in it. Not the whole physical thing, but just mm -hmm. there was a, an art, a, she was sarcastic and strong and, and I, I think there was a little bit, and don't get excited today, just a little bit <laughs> of me in that and so I felt like I'd be able to, you know, do something with her. So you're saying you're not sarcastic or strong? No, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. So did you, did you have, was it just the pilot script that you were looking at? When you so I read the pilot script, read it and thought it was a great character, um, sent the the thing. Press, I remember pressing send saying, yeah, I, I spent hours on this, I'm never going <laughs> to hear back. And that night I went out for dinner, or the next day I got a call saying we really like it. I, I didn't care about the job, I was like, oh my god, I get a response from America, this is great. And then they wanted to see my showreel, and on my showreel there was something about um, Ridley Scott. I put a quote that mm -hmm. he'd given me once. And um, then they realized I'd worked with him because it was Ridley Scott's company that were right. making it. And so they, I think they contacted him or whatever, and that's when I think they started to get excited. So Ridley made it all work out? Yeah. Ridley made it all. <laughs> it all comes together. It all comes together because of Mr. Scott. So did you... And Charles McDougall, who's the British director. Who's so you were driving to come to Hollywood and do something in... I mean, that was part of... I did want really to do something here, yeah. What I was it that made that interesting for you? 
I mean, I joked about America being the land of opportunity, but mm -hmm. you know, as a child in England, you always did see that. And any of the big films or anything in the industry, mm -hmm. you know, the place to be is America. So I grew up right in, so intrigued by people and cultural differences because I was Indian living in England, mm -hmm. and um, I think that's always been something that fascinates me. And so mm -hmm. I think when I go to different countries, just getting to know people and their cultures is something that I love doing. And, and so, so how's America going for you? America. I always wanted to come here as a child, and um, it took a bit of time to adjusting. But you know, we speak the same language. I've grown up watching it, so I moved to New York. I fitted right. It actually came to LA before going to New York, and um, yeah, I mean, I love it here. It's the land of opportunity, David. The land of opportunity. <laughs> 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 did it feel like that? I mean, did you go through the whole pilot, pilot, pilot thing for a while, or do you go? Uh, I never went through the pilot, pilot thing, but I did. I did come the first time I came here. I was like, whoa, because those castings when you go in, like in London, mm -hmm. I'd go for a casting, there'd be about four or five girls, and my chances of getting it were pretty good, whereas I came here, mm -hmm. and I was rejected, even though I'd meet these great casting people, and they go, yeah, she's great, she's great, and I'm like, well, do I get a call back? No. It's like, wow, it's, it's a lot, it's really tough here. I mean, they'll see a lot more people, you'll have four or five auditions, there's so many different things. It's, um, ethnicity? it was tough. Ethnicity a big issue I think here, ethnicity over here, actually, um, there's definitely, they, they see a lot more, I think there's a lot more opportunities. I think England is changing. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, look at the role on The Good Wife, you know, I think they saw people from all sorts of backgrounds. So that show seems like a parade. Every time I, I've, I've caught up with the show, season by season by season, I was not an originally a watcher of the show. Now I'm, con I'm now I'm completely hooked on it. But it seems like you have every non-working act, you know, every actor who has a week off. That's right. <laughs> shows up on That's the right. show we'll every th week. I know it's incredible. The cast that they managed to get is just unbelievable. Is that part of the fun? Is it fun to show it's up? It's definitely part of the fun because you just get to meet all the. I mean, I remember when I was told Michael J. Fox was coming. This is like the biggest class ever. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's you like good. something more dainty? No, 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 it's good. good. So when you did that movie, oh so many years ago, it doesn't seem like it's not that long. Don't say that. It wasn't very long at all really. It was 1996. 1996 or 7 or 8. So were you a good judge of, of acting at that point? Were you uh, no. were just so wet behind the ears? <laughs> um that was a play first, mm -hmm. and I went to see it, and I saw the character, and I went, oh my gosh, that, I, I've got to do that character, I've just got to do that character, it's such a great character, it's a tomboy, very similar to me as a child. Mm -hmm. And then the film came out, and I thought the girl who was in the play was fantastic, they'd never recast it, mm -hmm. and they did, <laughs> and I was ecstatic. Yeah. Did you always want to act? Yes. From when you were a little tiny girl? Or when Since you I came out the womb. <laughs> <laughs> New naturally? Or? Yeah, my mom actually had called me a different name when I was born and then she saw me she just went, I don't know why I think this one's going to be an actress. So obviously <laughs> it was something I just wanted to do from a really young age. And did you pursue it? Were you a child actor at all or were you, did you skip I did, that? but my parents were, you know, a little, they were good parents. They were strict mm -hmm. in terms of, they didn't want me to act, they wanted me to study and get an education and do all the sensible things that mm -hmm. good Indian parents do. And so they pushed me towards education and I kept pushing back towards the arts. So I trained as a ballerina, mm -hmm. as did tap dancing, and then slowly my mom kind of realized that I had this growing passion. Were you a good tap dancer? Was I a good tap dancer? <laughs> Were you a good ballerina? I think I was all right. <laughs> it was one of these things where you got a split, you know, something wrong with your... And I think I did up. it when I was, I was like four. Oh, so you, were, did you didn't it. wear like a high school ballerina? No, 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 no. I was four and I had to like really act to put my very serious face on. You know, every actor says, oh, we never get excited. Of course you do. You grew up with these people. Mm. Um, and I remember seeing him, I was in complete awe of him. So has it gotten a little more relaxed with her since then? Has it got a bit more relaxed? No, I'm still in awe of him. <laughs> <You're still like laughs> probably more there. when I see what he does, probably more. But you don't like hang out and go, hey, Mike, let's go have uh, burgers. <laughs> You're not having like burgers the, 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 around the. No, you know, I go, hello, the pool Michael. How, how are you, Michael? No, he's actually a really cool guy. <laughs> I can joke with him. He's actually a really, really nice guy. So, where did th this character begin when you first went up for this job? Was there any sense of this journey that you were going to go on over the last four seasons? Um, Five seasons? Four seasons? To tell you the truth, I was actually putting myself on tape for a lot of pilots at that time, but via. Um, 
the internet. I mean, right, you know, I was emailing castings over as opposed to going to America. Mm. And when this one came through, I was like, I'm not another one. I just put my heart and soul into all these other pilots and there was no feedback. And they actually chased me up and said, could you please put yourself on tape? And I went, no, all right. And I read the script and I really liked, I loved Kalinda when I read it. I went, oh, this one's quite good. So I spent like about eight hours putting myself on tape. Do you Had know a why friend. they were so interested in you? No clue. Still? No clue. They even told you they saw you in some moment and that in the Indian movie you don't want anybody to see? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that they were just genuine. I think they were just um, trying to find an Indian actress and uh, often, for some reason, I don't quite know, they do go to England when they're looking for British, uh, Indian actresses. Mm -hmm. So I think this was just the next step for them to take. Um, and probably because nobody else was available. So did you, had you played any tough guys before? I actually play a woman, you know that, right? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you play everything. You are the world. Um, <laughs> the don't way. play a tough guy. But she's a tough. She's probably the toughest. Piece of work.